Wrestling in 2022 was a super exciting year for the sport that we love so dear. Bye, Felicia. And from a theme music perspective, weren't we all captivated by some epic returns and other goosebump inducing events? But where do they wind up ranking according to you and your votes? Well, that being said, I'm Kevin Callis. This is Wrestling Behind the Themes, and here are the top 10 most memorable wrestling theme song moments of 2022. Ever since Triple H took over as WWE Head of Creative in July 2022, following the retirement of Vince McMahon, Papa H has made it a priority to take care of his past pet projects from his NXT booking days, and there's no question that Johnny Wrestling was one of Trips' favorites. Aww. Gargano had his greatest successes with Hunter at the helm, so after opting against re-signing at a time when the traditional black and gold brand was in a state of flux and switching over to NXT 2.0, Johnny Johnny took time away from the sport so that he and his wife, Candice LeRae, could focus on caring for their newborn son. Now, initially, it looked as though AEW would be the next destination for the 35-year-old. However, the narrative changed completely when the game took control. So on the August 22nd episode of Monday Night Raw, when the unmistakably upbeat babyface theme song Rebel Heart unexpectedly began to play, Johnny's return became reality and a moment in time to cherish. During his 10-year tenure with WWE, the artist formerly known as Antonio Cesaro had more entrance themes than I can remember, and none of which were memorable. Ew! If anything, Cesaro's best entrance theme was Patriot, the USA banger that served as the soundtrack for his partnership with Jack Swagger back when those two were a pair of real Americans, brother. Brother, 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 brothers. Now the Swiss Superman even went on the record in a 2016 interview with ESPN about his disdain for his entrance music. So it says something when fans were psyched out of their mind when the King of Swing returned to his Claudio Castagnoli name and officially became All Elite at June's Forbidden door pape. With a new theme called Uppercut Swing Funny, AEW music producer Mikey Ruckus knocked this banger out of the park in a big way. Whammy! We can all agree that there isn't a better hard rock wrestling entrance theme than Alter Bridge's Metal Lingus. But ever since Edge made his miraculous return to the squared circle after nine long years, several times the Hall of Famer has needed to tap into his dark past to prepare himself for battles against opponents like Seth freaking Rollins, the phenomenal AJ Styles, and everyone's favorite must-see WWE superstar, The Miz. And so at the inaugural Day One Premium Live event, the Rated R Superstar again resurrected the Brood's fiery entrance. Needless to say, when Edge first brought this back a few months prior, this radical moment was widely praised by fans. However, doing the same thing again so soon unfortunately made this feel not as special as the first time around. All Elite Wrestling has had its fair share of surprise debuts since its inception, but this one just hit differently. So at the Grand Slam edition of AEW Dynamite, Soraya was understandably extremely emotional from the reaction she received inside Arthur Ashe Stadium this past September. Medically speaking, it was a massive comeback akin to Edge and Brian Danielson, as the former Divas champion was not cleared to wrestle by the WWE, who ultimately let her contract expire this past summer. And another reason for Soraya's range of emotions was that her new entrance theme, Zombified, is a song by the American rock band Falling in Reverse, whose lead singer, Ronnie Radke, just happens to be her current boyfriend. After weeks of sending the WWE Universe down a proverbial rabbit hole by teasing the arrival of a mysterious figure with cryptic QR codes, subscribe right now, you will. The wrestling world was shaken to its core when Bray Wyatt made his gripping return at the end of October's Extreme Rules premium live event. The Eater of Worlds received a deafening ovation that night. However, it was what happened on the following Friday Night Smackdown that got people talking. Before delivering 
delivering a passionate but also bone-chilling speech about what led to his triumphant return, the WWE icon debuted a new theme song entitled Shatter by industrial metalcore outfit Code Orange, who previously adapted The Fiend's Let Me In entrance theme for Bray back in 2019. For years, Drew McIntyre has been hinting at the return of his beloved early career theme song, Broken Dreams. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with this track, it all dates back to when Drew was but a wee lad and debuted as the chosen one in 2007. McIntyre didn't get everything he wanted back then, so he reinvented himself into a much more chiseled and grizzled veteran who came back to crack some Claymore kicks. And after pushing Triple H and Kevin Dunn hard for it to happen, the the time was right when the E returned to the UK for September's Clash at the Castle. And while it drew a huge pop from the live crowd and was a full circle moment for McIntyre, for a lot of us it ended up being a huge letdown because only a snippet of the song was used as a prelude to Drew's current entrance theme, Gallantry. <laughs> The Elite made their return to AEW after being pulled from all programming following their brawl out at September's All Out with CM Punk. When at November's Full Gear pay-per-view, the sounds of Kansas's Carry On Wayward Son had the AEW Galaxy crying no more as they loudly sang along with this epic classic rocker. Now it also turns out that this wasn't just a one-time spin of the record where the song would just become dust in the wind because the Bucks of Youth had been fans of the track for years and used to use the tune back when they were good Christian boys and running their backyard federation in Phil's favorite vacation spot of Reseda. Blue, you're my boy! Thank you, sir. At the time of this recording, it's hard to believe that the Shield Survivor Series debut happened over a decade ago. And even though they were broken up, reformed, and then split up again when Jon Moxley rolled out from WWE, fans probably thought they would never again hear the words <coughs> Sierra, Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta. But just leave it to good old Seth freaking Rollins, who brought back their special op theme along with the classic through the crowd entrance for his WWE Universal Championship match against Roman Reigns at the 2022 Royal Rumble. It was a masterful move by the Visionary, whose mind games worked as Seth won the match via DQ, which just happened to be the Tribal Chief's first singles loss in over two years since he was last defeated by King Corbin in December 2019. Do you know the Muffin Man? I mean, of course you do. He single-handedly broke the internet after what had so far been a stellar year for the Second City Saint that included two AEW world title wins, a Feud of the Year candidate with MJF, and this moment right here at March's Revolution pay-per-view where Punk surprised fans by not walking out to Living Color's Cult of Personality. Rather, Phil called back to his Ring of Honor days, opting to use his ROH theme, Miseria Cantara by AFI. For those of you who understood the callback, it was a beautiful example of long-term storytelling that just went to show that not everything has to have a big budget. Some moments can be simple, nostalgic, and still extremely effective. And if there was any doubt, yes, this is an anticlimactic number one. But when Cody Rhodes left WWE in 2016 to embark on a self-discovery of sorts, he made it crystal clear that he'd probably never work for the E again. Well, never say never, right? Because after three years of building all elite wrestling into a legitimate number two promotion in the industry, the American Nightmare surprised everyone when he and his lovely wife Brandy decided to part ways with AEW. And then on April 
April 2nd at night one of WrestleMania 38. In a moment that most expected, the Coatsters now iconic entrance theme Kingdom by the band Downstate began to play and the roar that rained down from inside AT&T Stadium was off the hook. So do you agree or disagree with our list? Well, either way, please leave a comment down below and let us know what you think. And also go ahead and give this video a massive thumbs up because it helps the channel grow and reach new people. And make sure you check out some of our other videos like this one right over here.